Welcome to Epworth United Methodist Church, where we follow the example of Christ by welcoming, nurturing, and serving all people with love. And also, greetings to all of us, all of you who are joining us via the website. Thank you to everyone who continues to be faithful in your stewardship. For those of you who are here, of course, there is a plate outside the worship center where you can drop your offering. For those of you who are not here, um, uh, you can, uh, and even for those who are here, you can send your offering via um, the mail, um, electronically through your bank, or also give via the website. Thank you for continuing to maintain um, social distancing while you're here and using lots of hand sanitizer. We want to continue to be safe and healthy, um, not only here, but out uh, when we are in public. So there's information about ways to stay healthy. We don't want to get complacent. There's information on the bulletin board of ways to do that. So. Um, we want to continue to keep everybody healthy um, in our communities. I want to share other prayer um, requests and uh, joys and concerns. Um, first of all, we continue to pray for Bobby's mother. Um, she shared that her mother isn't um, eating or drinking and is confused, so we um, want to continue for her care um, and uh, for her recovery. Thank you for your ongoing prayers for my mother. I just got back from being with her, and um, she um, got, a, got good reports and, um, from both her uh, orthopedic surgeon and urologist from her two surgeries, and, uh, and so we're making progress. But of course, um, uh, recovering from a hip replacement, for those of you who have had such things or knee replacements, um, recovery and rehabilitation takes time. So that's where she is in that process. So thanks for your ongoing prayers and um, cards that she continues to receive. It means so much to her and to me. Pat Waddell learned that um, uh, as we predicted, at least she and I predicted, that the hand is actually broken. Wrist, wrist is broken. So uh, she's still in her, uh, whatever you call that, um, uh, restraint. restraint. Thank you, um, Nurse Pat, for helping me. And uh, so she just has to endure. Um, Liddy Lindsay is recovering from her eye surgery on Monday, and so we pray that that, um, that is just going to take time to um, heal and recover, so um, please hold Liddy in your prayers. Um, Lynn Moyer, where'd she go? She is with us. She ha is finally off of her scooter and um, is back on two legs after her um, ankle, uh, and two shoes after her ankle um, surgery. So we rejoice that you are back with us and that you are more mobile. And I know it feels good to be out and about, Lynn. So we're glad you're here. Yeah, well, it was our joy. Also, Ruth Holdren asked us uh, to hold her neighbors in prayer. Um, uh, one of them, the husband, is in the hospital with COVID-19, and the wife is at home with COVID-19. So we hold them in prayer. Uh, and of course, we continue to pray for those impacted by Hurricane Laura. Um, and for all of the devastation and destruction um, in the south and along the Gulf Coast. Um, it's going to be a long recovery. So let us, oh, and one celebration. Where's Charlie? Charlie's uh, our um, hall uh, hostess, host, hall host. Um, but he is, uh, he and uh, his wife, uh, Gail, are grandparents again. 
Um, Oakley Renee Worthen was born on Friday um, to Chris and Katie Worthen. So we celebrate a healthy baby girl. Um, and so, um, of course, the grandparents are thrilled. And um, you know what grandparents do. So um, they're looking forward to doting over Oakley. And, and uh, so we celebrate a new baby um, with, uh, in the Worthen family. Let's pray together. Creator God, we praise you for this beautiful morning, for waking us up to see it so that we can worship and glorify you. For the rain and the sun, the cool air and the beauty of creation, we stand in awe and sing your praise for the gift of life and all that is in it, including the birth of a new baby that will bless a family, for the blessings of people who love us and whom we love, for the people we have encountered throughout this past week, for what we may have learned from them, ways they may have blessed us, or you may have used us to bless them. Continue to use us as blessings to others. You continue to bind us together as one people, one global community, no matter how hard we resist it. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for our resistance for our sin of racism, of injustice, of our inactivity to do anything to change it, or worse, to participate with word or action in that injustice racism, or other prejudice. Forgive us for letting political parties or worldly differences close our hearts and our ears and our minds to one another. May we be gentle in our differences and choose kindness and love to overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy, cleanse us of our sin. Gracious God, we thank you that we find comfort and peace in you. We come with concerns for people we love, people we know, people in our church family and in our own lives, and people we have named. We can lift them up to you. We can carry their names, carry those concerns to you carry those joys to you, celebrations to you, and you receive them, you take them from us, you carry those burdens for us, you bind up the wounds, You help those who are recovering from natural disasters. You comfort the brokenhearted. Give hope 
to the discouraged. Give strength to the weak. Bring healing in your own ways and your own timing. We trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we lay them down before them, before you. Show us how we may be vessels of your compassion, generosity, mercy, or simply your presence to those who are alone, hurting in any way, or do not feel or know your love. We pray all this in the precious and powerful name of Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning's scripture really is taken from <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in human love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. People, I'm sorry, do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts. Open our minds. Open our spirits. That we would feel your presence with us, that the words of scripture would dwell deep within us, so that through my words, or in spite of them, we would hear your word to us today. Amen. I often read this passage from Romans at weddings because a wedding is marking the beginning of a covenantal relationship between two people. And the foundation of any of that relationship must be love. But not just any love, sincere love genuine love, authentic love. There are expectations of one another in a covenantal relationship, no matter how long you've been together. Expectations of sharing one another's burdens, caring for one another's needs, 
sharing in each other's joys, forgiving and reconciling, being humble and kind to one another. For those of you in a covenantal relationship, how are you doing? But Paul wasn't speaking to married couples. He was speaking to the church. He was speaking to the church family. We all know that we have a family of origin, the family that we were born into, as well as a family of choice, the people in our lives whom we love and trust and have become as close as family, the people that we marry, for example. Or, for example, in my case, my best friend from middle school is still my best friend almost 40 years later and is like a sister to me. She is part of my family of choice. For many, the church is also part of our family of choice, which is what Paul is getting to. He is saying that we as the church, as those who have chosen to follow Jesus and are part of the Christian community, are members of a new family. As Jesus said, those who do the will of my father are my mother and my brother and my sisters. That is how we choose to be part of Jesus' family, the beloved community. So as family members, brothers and sisters in Christ, Paul uses the Greek word philio, brotherly or human love, to refer to the family love of those who are living in community. As a church, we treat each other like family and not like Thanksgiving dinner with crazy uncles that show up and cousins and where we tiptoe around and things like that, but in the best sense of the world. As brothers and sisters bound together by the love of Christ, we may not always get along, but we are striving to live after the example of Jesus together. We remember that we are not in this alone. We are rejoicing together. We are weeping together. We are building up one another. We are hoping and praying and working on being patient with each other, with ourselves, and with God together. As Richard Rohr says, patience is the very shape of love. And indeed, patience goes a long way in helping us to live in peace with each other, doesn't it? In families, most acts of love aren't extraordinary. You know, it's like taking out the trash before being asked. Remembering birthdays, taking care of you when you're sick, listening when you need someone to talk to, giving you a hug, even a virtual one. Or as Mother Teresa said, do not think that love, in order for it to be genuine, has to be extraordinary. What we need is to love without getting tired. How does a lamp burn? Through the continuous 
input of drops of oil. What are those drops of oil in our lamps? They are the small things of daily life, faithfulness, small words of kindness, a thought for others, our way of being silent, of looking, of speaking, of acting. These are the true drops of love that keep your religious life burning like a living flame. And these are the drops of love that sustain our relationships and help them to grow as we develop trust with one another and encourage one another in our mutual efforts to live faithfully as members of the Christian family. But Paul goes further than this to talk about having genuine love in difficult times, even times of conflict. These things happen in families sometimes. Families have conflicts sometimes and in the church, and certainly in our culture at large. We are all going to run into times when there are conflicts, when we have to deal with difficult people or have misunderstandings. And certainly we are witnessing and experiencing that at a much larger, yet just as personal scale with systemic racism. After yet another young black man was shot by a police officer, followed by violence, including a white man shooting two people peacefully protesting, when there was a public outcry again and again saying, when we say all lives matter, do we mean including black lives. And even by making that statement, I know that it is a cause for conflict and anger among some individuals with me. And yet, this is when we must love all the more. We must show love by hating what is evil. We must be willing to do what is right, as we are seeing among professional athletes of all races. And if it is possible, here is the tough one, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. This is how we overcome evil with good, by choosing love over hate, peace over violence, generosity over self-centeredness, repentance over pride. Following the fall of apartheid, South Africa, convened a Truth and Reconciliation Commission where perpetrators of war crimes in the name of oppressing blacks would confess to a jury and to either the victims or the victims' families for what they had done to them. It was a painful but necessary process in if that country was going to move past the evil of apartheid. Archbishop Desmond Tutu chaired the commission. He writes in his book, No Future Without Forgiveness, that recounts the commission's work. A person with Ubuntu is open and available to others, affirming of others, and does not feel threatened that 
others are able and good. For he or she has a proper self-assurance that comes from knowing that he or she belongs in a greater whole and is diminished when others are humiliated or diminished, when others are tortured or oppressed. Ubuntu speaks of the very nature of being human. We say, hey, so-and-so has Ubuntu. Then you are generous, you are hospitable, you are friendly and caring and compassionate. You share what you have. It is to say, my humanity is caught up in your humanity. We belong in a bundle of life. We say a person is a person through other persons. In other words, sincere love recognizes the value of each person, celebrates the uniqueness of each person, realizes that I cannot be my best self, who God created me to be, if I am not helping you to be your best selves, who God created each one of you to be. As many of you recall, Jackie Robinson was the first black man to play Major League Baseball. In his first season with the Brooklyn Dodgers, Robinson faced venom and racism everywhere he traveled. Pitchers threw fastballs at his head. Runners spiked him on the bases. Brutal epithets were written on cards and letters and spoken from the opposing dugouts. He received so many death threats letters. Even the home crowds in Brooklyn saw him as an object of reproach. During one game in Boston, the taunts and racial slurs seemed to reach a peak. To make matters worse, Robinson committed an error and stood at second base humiliated while fans hurled insults at him. Then another Dodger, a southern white man by the name Pee Wee Reese, called time out. He walked from his position at shortstop toward Robin Robinson at second base. And with the crowds looking on, he put his arm around Robinson's shoulder. The fans grew quiet. Robinson later said that arm around his shoulder saved his career. This is sincere love. Love that hates what is evil, clings to what is good, love that honors one another above yourselves, that lives in harmony with one another, including those of low position or those who are seen as those of low position because we are humble. This is an example of the kind of love that mirrors Ubuntu. This is an example of the kind of love that Paul is calling us to. And we have much work to do to get there as a culture and even as a church, a wider church. So it is the kind of love that is lived out within the family of Christ, the beloved community, 
that is a reflection of Christ himself to the world. A love we witnessed in Christ that has the power to conquer sin and evil because of the cross through which we are saved. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand for the benediction. And as the benediction, I want you to hear these words one more time. As a commission as we go out. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in human love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serve the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in, in affliction, faithful in in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who pers persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And may the God who loves us, the Christ who saves us, and the Spirit that sanctifies us be with us all, now and always. Amen. You may be seated.